So Aston Martin have announced the new Aston Martin Vanquish, um, a follow on from the wonderful but compromised Aston Martin DBS. The Aston Martin Vanquish keeps the formula the same in some areas, such as the twin turbocharged V12 engine, um, this time putting out 600, 600, sorry, 835 horsepower and 1000 newton meters of torque. So it's a massive upgrade over the previous car. Um, also, um, they've changed some things. For example, gone are the rear seats. It is a now a two plus zero. So all you have behind you is storage, which um, is unfortunate and I feel makes the car slightly less usable, but makes it more appealing when you consider that they're focusing this car on being a supercar slash super tourer. It is very, very beautiful. Um, it has elements of old Aston Martin and a lot of uh, new elements that I think make this car uh very identifiable but also very iconic it is still also very beautiful i don't feel like it is as polarizing as the dodici cilindri was for ferrari um which is this car's competitor and this car actually coming out on top when it comes to performance figures um in terms of power and torque and it also has a top speed of 214 miles per hour making it the fastest uh production aston martin ever made so uh originally i saw this car and i thought oh well that looks good I managed to see it in person. I went to Silverstone yesterday, in fact, and uh, it looked gorgeous. Uh, I didn't think it would tickle my fancy as much as it has to the point that I'm considering getting one now, uh, which is annoying because I always want to get different things. And it just means that I end up getting too many cars and having this issue where I don't drive any. But yeah, I, I think I should customize one, see how it is, send it to my Aston Martin dealer, get it priced up and then decide whether or not we are going to get this car. Uh, before I get started, I'm going to talk a bit about the design, but I want to go through some of the headline figures for this car. So it is obviously the new uh, Halo car. This is the top of the Aston Martin range, followed by the DB12 underneath it, Advantage and then DBX707. 5.2-litre um, V12 tin turbo engine. Um, they are calling it a new engine. I spoke to some of the Aston Martin team yesterday. It's not entirely new. It is just heavily reworked to get those new performance figures. No mention of the zero to 60. It is rear wheel drive. I'm expecting about 3.2 or 3.5 seconds. Uh, new chassis structure. It is 80 millimeters larger, which doesn't sound that much. Um, it's about this much, but in design terms, it is a massive amount. If we look at the car here, it's got what they're calling a boomerang. What I'm highlighting there, a uh, boomerang vent. Oh, sorry boomerang bow and arrow sorry i am very tired um bow and arrow vents over here you've also got uh, uh the glass roof on top now which is in fact um you can't they wanted to make it so you can press a button it will tint but unfortunately you cannot do that and the reason is um it's too large and it's too curved to work that in so no company wanted to take on the task um it sounds like they didn't want to spend the money on r d um the rear of the car, I think, is uh, one of the most hotly contested parts of the car. But for me, it's one of my favorite parts of the car. It features uh, these new lights similar to the, I think it was the Valiant is what it was called. And it also has this uh, piece on the back that they're calling the uh, Aston Martin Shield, not the logo in terms of, uh, they call it the Shield because it is a separate piece of trim. Uh, behind the uh, rear boot space of the car. And it's in carbon fiber right now. Uh, but I'm going to get customizing and um, we're going to dive right in. And um, um, I'll talk to you more about the design of the car as we go through it. Um, so, um, yeah, should we get started? First things first, um, as I do whenever I'm customizing cars, uh, color, um, it is what um, allows people to um, see express themselves, uh, an expression of personality, I'd like to call it. Um, Aston Martin have many colors, many expensive colors that they call Q colors. Uh, as you guys know, my favorite color is purple, but I would not be doing this car in purple just because I, that's my go-to for everything. They have tons of reds as well. Very, very beautiful beautiful reds um i feel like this configurator isn't doing it justice let me change the environment see if we can get the colors a bit more pronounced so you can really really appreciate it really take it in so yeah uh it's it, it, this configurator is really good by the way all right so yeah they have bronzes uh you can get this regular white um i think white is what i like to start with when customizing a car in terms of uh, i like to let people see uh the elements i'm putting on the car however um, I controversially think this car actually looks really good in red. 
there is a red that I'm going to put on the screen now. This is called Andromeda Red and it is gorgeous. It's not on the configurator. So I want you guys to try and imagine this color on the car. When I select one of these uh, basic reds, um, they're still very expensive options. So I want you to just imagine this one of these uh, flip colors. You want a red one? Not really. You don't really want a red one, do you? Let me change that up. So uh, let me go with a green. I, I do like green. I have not got a green car at the moment apart from my bright green Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. So I'm going to go for a bit of a more subtle green on this car. Uh, just to, again, tie into, I guess, the British Britishness of this car. So uh, yeah, green's looking good so far. So I want the grill in black. I'm not a massive fan of... Um, I'm not a massive fan of uh, silver grills. I think black helps to hide uh, the grilliness of the grill. When it comes to the roof, panoramic glass roof, I think is the one to go for. Um, of course, I believe there is a carbon option, uh, but I would not. I wouldn't go for that. Apart from, I think when you get this other option, you actually get a little bump in the roof. Uh, yeah, you get a little bump in the roof. So it actually looks aggressive, but I would just want the panoramic to open it up. This car is like a, a supercar that you can use as a Grand Tourer. So I think that would be essential. Glass roof, uh, wheels, uh, gold wheels always look good, but I don't really want gold wheels on, uh, on this green car. So I would go for silver wheels with a bit of black in them as well, just to keep it, um, just to keep it plush, keep it sophisticated. Yeah, that, that to me, that looks good. I like black wheels, but they're so played out now that, um, I'm not a black wheel kind of guy. I don't think I've ordered a car with black wheels in absolutely ages. Um, funnily enough, the car is longer and does not feature rear wheel steering. So um, I'm very curious to get it out on the road and just see how it is. Brakes, we'll go for black brakes. We'll keep it um, plush, keep it subtle, or like they say on TikTok, demure. So yeah, I think this looks very nice. This is a very British man spec, I feel. Um, this isn't the final color I'm going to go for. So I'm going to actually get customizing the car and then I'll flick to another color just to see if this is what uh, I really want and what you guys think is good. Extended exterior package, uh, gloss. Yeah, on the rear, this shield section, I think will be gloss. You can actually get it painted body color as well. But I think it looks so aggressive and it looks so dynamic when it's uh, in carbon fiber. Uh, so yeah, that's the exterior. Uh, let's move on to the interior. And surprise, surprise, I bet it's in tan. Yep, it is in tan. Oh, again, I like to call it old man spec. I'm going to switch up. Green on tan looks great, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm not going to go for monotone. I'm actually going to go for like a duo tone. Primary color, uh, let's do tan up top. Secondary color, let's go for, you guys know I love a white interior. I'm going to try and do something. Hopefully it works out. White. Okay, it's it's kind of what I'm trying to do. Let me change the tone to in mid duo tone because I want the steering wheel to be the color of the top half. That's where we're at, headlining tan as well. So you have the tan going above the seats. I'm going to put the sport seats. They are less comfortable getting in and out of when you're, once you're in them, they're fine, but they do look gorgeous. I'll try and see if I can get an angle for them. Yeah, they look very gorgeous. I must say, I must say. Very, very gorgeous. That looks good. I like this. Actually, let me go back to interior. Let me do where it says light duo tone. Let me do mid duo tone. Hopefully, this looks amazing once it's done. Mid duo tone. Yes, I think this is better. I think this is better. Yes, I like this more. I think steering wheel, steering wheel color. What you can do is make it black, which is frustrating. Uh, that looks sick though. I like that. Um, sorry, let me go back and see if I can give you guys some more angles of the interior. So this is just looking absolutely supreme. Look at that. I wish I could make this lower half white, but tan with the white, I think it's a great contrast. Really, really great contrast. Aston Martin logo. I like the logo in black. Don't shoot me. I just think it looks better. Uh, standard muffler, titanium. Uh, I think standard's fine. Titanium, would it go the titanium -y, silvery color? It will, it will, it won't, it will, it won't. Okay, it stays black, which is nice. Uh, interior options, seat technology, non ventilated seat, Bowles and Wilkins, a lot of this is standard. So um, in green, uh, I don't want this nighttime view. In green, that is the exterior. 
I don't want this split view. That is the interior, the side view. Very nice. I think it's cool. I'm not a massive fan of green, uh, this style of green. Uh, let me change the environment, see what that looks like. Try and change the color and see if we can come up with a color together that works. So let's go to paint. Currently green, we can go neon green, uh, which will be very difficult to sell on, I feel. I don't need several purple cars in my life. The ion blue looks good. Uh, let's see what that's like. Ion blue, nice, not too, not too hot. Blacks and greys, greens, reds. I really, that red was really speaking to me. That red was really speaking to me, but I'm just gonna try and avoid it. Cosmos orange, it's slightly crazy. White, let's try white, zenith white. Let's see what that's like. Just makes the car look so basic with the white, doesn't it? But the thing about white is it just looks so simple. Look at that though. Wow, you really get the contrast of the carbon fiber. I think red, you know, I think that red, imagine it in that red that I was telling you about earlier. I think that is the color to go for. I think that's the color to go for. I think it will just look crazy in that red. I mean, you probably won't be able to have that tan interior. This car's absolutely gorgeous. I really want one, but I just have too many cars, as my wife would say. Yeah, so guys, let me know what you think. I'm gonna send this to the dealer. What do you prefer, the green or the red? What do you think of the car? I think it's absolutely stunning and it'll be great to get it out on the road in the coming months. So yeah, I'll let you know, but I think this is absolutely fire. Uh, I look forward to seeing it on the road. Let me just try purple. It, uh, 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 if I go for red, obviously the interior won't be tan. That would be outlandish. I just want to, I just want to establish that. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. And um, peace. Thanks for tuning in to this impromptu video.